Here are three spoiler-free tips to get you started in Fire Emblem Engage. First up, early on in Somnial, your base of operations, you'll be able to engrave your weapons at the smithy with the markings of an emblem ring. Each emblem ring offers a unique stat modification to the weapon and will cost bond fragments to do so. In the early game, bond fragments come pretty easily and for the low cost of engraving the early weapons of the game, which is like 50 bond fragments or 100 bond fragments, you can increase the power and survivability of your unit substantially. Do note that you can only engrave an emblem stat to one weapon at a time. So if you engrave Marth's emblem to Alir's weapon, for example, you won't be able to use it on another weapon without removing the engraving from Alir's weapon. My personal favorite is using Celica and Micaiah's engraving on Vander's weapon early on to increase his survivability while reducing his damage output, allowing me to finish off enemies with my weaker units. Secondly, chain guards and chain attacks are super powerful in this game. Chain guards are capable of saving you or your enemies from many fatal encounters in maddening mode. When a chi adept has full health, they are able to initiate a chain guard, allowing them to take up to 20% of their maximum HP for an ally, regardless of how much damage that ally takes. So if you are fighting a particularly strong enemy, you can use this chain guarded unit to bait that enemy into a position that is advantageous for you without dying. Chain attacks, on the other hand, have multiplicative value and is very easy to utilize early on. How it works is that if a backup unit can attack the enemy and you attack that enemy with another unit, the backup unit will join in on the combat with a chain attack which does a fraction of their damage. Early on, it's gonna be like two or three and you're gonna think, ah, oh, that's not really that much, but hang on. If you place them in the right spot and use a weapon that has one to two range, well, they're gonna be able to attack every single time with all of your allies that are fighting an enemy one or two range away from the character. And in more dense maps, this can add up pretty quick. Of course, this can also be used against you, so be careful where you place your characters. You do get a backup unit really early on in chapter 3 with Busharion and then you get a hand axe soon after so make great use of this it will help you out a lot. For example you can go in and attack with an iron axe and then if there's an enemy 2 range away do a trade trick with Busharion give him a hand axe and then attack with the unit that you were gonna attack with anyways and now Busharion will be able to jump in on that attack as well. If Busharion is not your flavor you'll be getting another backup in Anna and Lapis soon after chapter 3. I can't recommend experimenting with chain guards and chain attacks enough especially if you're trying to tackle higher difficulty. If you've been enjoying your time so far, please give this video a like and consider subscribing for more Fire Emblem Engage content. Thanks. Lastly, class changing works a bit differently than older Fire Emblem games. It requires weapon proficiencies that are only provided by leveling up bond levels with specific emblem rings. Units will come with an innate weapon proficiency already. For example, Alir will know how to use a sword before gaining a sword proficiency from an emblem ring, and same with Saline from Tomes. While Marth is very strong on Alir and Celica is strong on Saline early on, it may be better to lose that short term power and have them equip another emblem ring earlier to get their bond levels up for other weapon proficiencies if you want to have the flexibility of class changing and gathering class specific skills as fast as possible. Another way around this is to go into the arena where you can level up bond levels with any ring by spending 100 bond fragments per level up to level 5. This can really speed up the process in terms of class changing and getting weapon proficiencies for a lot of different characters. Oh, and a quick bonus, Cantor, Sigurd's engaged skill that allows unit to move two spaces after attacking can be inherited by any type of unit you are not locked to cavalry. All you need is to get the unit's bond level with Sigurd to level 5 and then spend a thousand skill points. It's definitely a heavy investment, but Cantor can substantially increase your playmaking abilities within this game. So definitely keep that in mind. With these three tips, you'll be on your way to dominating the battlefield in no time. Have fun, and if you have any other tips that I didn't mention, please let us know in the comments below. You may end up saving someone's playthrough. Oh, and there's another specific early game tip I want to share with you. Adopting dogs seem to be very OP in the early game. Find out why by checking this video on screen right now. My name is Versana, and I'll see you in the next video.